so with the new format, we, we might get straight into it. Um, so it's nice to see everybody here and welcome. Um, and it's really a great pleasure to welcome Mark Clare, who's just joined, joined us as, as an artist in residence, that, who's kind of co-sponsored by um, the Earth Institute and by Dunleary Rathdown County Council um, with interests in, in biodiversity and exploring uh, how uh, research can, can be expressed in different ways and explored in different ways through through the medium of art. So I, I, without further ado, I'll hand over to Mark uh, to, to hear his, his perspective. So thanks very much for joining us, Mark. Thank you. Okay, so what I thought I'd do, well, obviously I'm going to start by saying that I'm delighted to be here participating in this collaborative project with Earth Institute and Mary Rat Down and Parity Studios. And what I thought I'd uh, do this morning is start by showing you some previous work and then talk a little bit about what I'm hoping to do while I'm here. So uh, over the last five years or so I have been developing projects that examine to what extent human activities have had a significant impact on um, the Earth's ecosystems. So in the slide that you can see here is a collection of paintings from the series Ice Mountains. And this is a series, how do I do it? Oops, here's the first technical hitch. How do I move slide? Oops, okay. So, um, yeah, it's a series of watercolors that I've been working on over the last number of years. And each painting depicts a large iceberg that has calved from the polar ice shelves due to the increase in global temperature that have affected both ocean currents and wind. Um, each one is painted in the style of military camouflage. And the idea behind that is while it is kind of ridiculous to try and camouflage something of such a large scale, uh, sadly, these icebergs are actually invisible to the majority of people. And each one is named after the identification number of the iceberg and has a little bit of text about the berg. So this one is called B15, 295 kilometers long and 37 kilometers wide is the world's largest recorded iceberg, larger than Jamaica. So as I said, I've been working on and off on this project for the last number of years, but to be honest, I have neglected it recently. And I believe that there are a couple of icebergs that need to be added to this project. So if anyone out there has any suggestions, I would be delighted to hear from you. So this next piece is, uh, if not you, which is an audio inst installation that takes uh, natural events that are naked to be invisible by, but are essential to the ecological equilibrium of our planet as its starting point. And one such event is the aerial transportation of a dust uh, along a, an atmospheric conveyor belt from the Sahara to South America. And each year, this dust that is consists of finely ground algae that was produced during the Holocene period is carried across the Atlantic uh, from the Sahara to the Amazon basin and is the rich nutrients that are uh, in this dust that replenishes the nutrients that get seeped out of the soil due to the tropical rains there. And obviously this is essential for the healthy upkeep of the rainforests but Due to global warming, this annual event is being impacted and obviously this is having a negative impact on the rainforest. So stories like this uh, have been collected from various sources and the stories have been being translated into Morse code using a program that you can download from the internet. And this program allows me to translate Morse code at various uh, tones and tempos. And then I take these audio compositions and I have uh, mixed them to create this multi-layered composition that speaks to each other. And this is then um, transmitted as a live broadcast using digital radio transmitters to these household radios that are tuned to different FM frequencies. And the radios are placed on this modular construction that 
creates the symphony of beats. It's static. And the modular aspect of the construction allows me to reconfigure the piece depending on what environment it is being shown in. So over its lifetime, it's had a number of configurations. And each encounter is unique due to the interference that happens as people move around the space, as well as the atmospheric interference on the day. And the artwork attempts to transcend physical space, infiltrating the ether to create an experience of an imagined space. And again, if there's anybody out there who thinks they have a story that might work with this project, I would really love to hear from you. Okay, so this next piece piece is called God's Land and it takes the illegal trade of charcoal in Somalia as its starting point to examine the impact of financial marks, uh, markets on uh, the environmental impact of financial markets. And in this space we see this animation projected onto a black projection screen that is fashioned to look like a flag that is similar to the ones that is used by the militant group Al-Shabaab. And on the opposite wall, there's a plaque that is of an article that I just read in Financial Times in 2014 that um, documents or discusses the role of Al-Shabaab in this illegal charcoal trade. So this trade, this illegal trade, is worth millions of dollars each year, and the majority of it ends up in the Middle East used for hookah pipes. And it's a source problem of deforestation as entire swathes of acacia forests are clear cut in southern Somalia. And this decreases local biodiversity as species that rely on the growth are unable to survive without them. It also has a negative impact on agriculture in the area due to the desertification of the, the land. Okay, so. This is Missing, which was a public intervention that came out of a three-month uh, art and biodiversity residency that, uh, where I, I was based in Wexford. And while there, I had the opportunity to engage with local scientists, environmental specialists, specialists and the community to learn more about um, the impact of climate change and habitat loss on the local biodiversity. And through these conversations, I became interested in the role of solitary bees, and in particular, Osmia orlanta, which is a solitary bee that is only found along the east coast of Ireland and makes its nest in empty snail shells. So uh, with the help of Wexford County Council, we put up these posters at all the blue and green flag beaches across Wexford. And on the poster, you can see an image of Osmia orlanta with a little bit of information about that species, and then some more general information about the importance of solitary bees for local biodiversity. And the project was pretty successful in drawing attention to the importance of solitary bees through a number of articles that were written in local newspapers and an interview on South Wexford Radio. So that kind of brings me to where I am here. And from my time here in Parity, Parity Studios, I have proposed looking at the decline of insect populations and the impact that this is having on the local biodiversity of Dunmere right Down. And I'm sure many of you know over the last 30 years, up to 30% of Ireland's insects have disappeared. So while I'm here, uh, I'm particularly interested in learning more about interspecies relationships. And I'm interested in looking at these as examples of symbiotic relationships that represent a creative and sensitive approach to living in one's environment as a possible theme for developing new work around. I'm also uh, interested in learning more about environmental policies and programs in relation to um, insect conservation and how that is being implemented throughout different areas. And out of that research, what I'm hoping to do is to produce a project that can engage with as wide an audience as possible uh, of all ages in a conversation around the real uh, and dangerous threat of global uh, climate change and the impact that that is having on our local biodiversity. And that is it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much indeed, Mark. That's fascinating stuff and really good to sort of see 
such a range of interest from kind of global scale phenomena to, to international issues and concerns right down to more localized concerns in, in County Wexford. Um, and great to see the different ways that you can experience and perceive these, these topics. So, so I think it's fantastic. Um, do, does anyone have any, any questions that they'd like to ask or comments that they'd like to make? I was going to sort of ask if there's people that you are there people that you've already been in touch with what kind of inspired this this project and are there people that you've already been speaking to around the kinds of things that you'll explore and how how you how you might explore them well I mean I guess it's come out of the time I spent in Wexford last summer like it's kind of expanding on that research that I guess that I did there and I saw this is a fantastic opportunity to tap into the experience of people here on the different issues, as I said, like insect populations, as well as environmental policies and programs. So the Earth Institute obviously is a place where you can access a lot of that kind of information. You know? um, I was talking to a couple of, a group of researchers at SUSPOL, and uh, that was kind of my first introduction to a group here and they were very helpful and very enthusiastic and hopefully that will lead to some other stuff. Also, obviously I'm working with Dunleary Ratdown County Council and I'm uh, uh, in communication with Anne Murray, who's the biodiversity officer there. So it's an, you know, a number of threads that have to start being pulled together, I guess, and seeing where that leads. And do you already have any thoughts about the kind of form that your work might take, or are you really at an early stage now of just exploring the, the, the issues and the, and the, um, the phenomena and, and thinking about what you want to express? I yeah, think. I do, I do have some ideas. I do have some ideas, but as I've said at the interview and always, you turn up with an idea and then you start having conversation with people and that idea just either goes out the window or you know, changes, mutates into some other project. So, and also I, um, I imagine that this will lead to more than one project, that there will be two or three avenues that will hopefully develop and expand, you know. I'm not going to commit myself. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Gra Graham, you had a hand up. I, I haven't got a very good view of the of this screen this time around. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Thanks very much, Mark. Thanks very much, Mark. That was that was really interesting. And I, I'm from the School of Archaeology, and it might be worth a colleague of mine, Steve Davis, was unable to attend this morning, but he works with ancient insect communities in order to reconstruct past environments and past living conditions for humans. So that might be a, a another perspective that you know, might give you some time depth on how those interspecies interrelationships have changed and played out over time. But I'd be I'd be very happy to put an introduction together for, for the two of you. As I say, he just wasn't able to attend this morning. Excellent. That would be great. Thank you very much. Well, and there's some there's some work done on that. We have an on-campus center for experimental archaeology, and they've been doing some work there on the different insect communities that live in houses characteristic of different periods of time. So again, that might be there might be opportunities for, yeah. for nice collaborations there. That sounds fascinating. It really does. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Ima, did you, um, I see you un unmuted your microphone, were you preparing to, uh, <laughs> to say something? I was going to say, I, I didn't mention you in the introduction, but obviously the whole mm -hmm. program is, is run through Parity Studios and, and Ima, Ima drives it, so I think it's a fantastic initiative and uh, I'd be interested uh, yeah. in what you have to say. Well, thanks a million, Taz. This is actually, it's, it's just, um, well, first of all, it's, it's fantastic to, to be working now with the Earth Institute um, in supporting this um, residency. So thanks to everyone for, and Will and Katrina and yourself for setting this up. Um, it's also, I think, important that we are um, collaborating with Dunleary Rathdown County Council and they have a number of, it's Anne Murray who's running it, has a number of really 
good on the ground um, engaged projects like the slow to mow, like the, um, I know Mark has been talking to her about the wildlife corridors and how important they are. And then um, really harnessing the collective power of, of individuals um, in the community to, um, to raise awareness and to become proactive in supporting the biodiversity in the area. So um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's fantastic to have you um, on board. Forest Park here. Uh, thanks a million for the uh, introduction to um, CMAC as well. Is it C E A? Do you say CMAC or is it called C E A M C? I'm not sure how to say it. No, we, 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 we would say CMAC. CMAC, thanks, Graham. Um, yeah, I know that they're doing wonderful work and they're also um, collaborating with uh, some of the other artists and residents this year too. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to say hi and thanks and um, delighted that Mark is here and that we're able to support him in this way. Thanks, Ema. Does anyone else have any, any questions or comments or, or thoughts? Well, I just want to um, support Ema's comment on connectedness. I thought that, that's very interesting. I'm an engineer, so we're interested in the, uh, the value of roadside verges, I know they're degraded habitats, but they have potential to connect better habitats to each other. And we, uh, we do some work on crossings, so crossings for animals and invertebrates over the roads and under the roads. That's cool, yeah, that's another nice kind of theme, and I guess connecting us is, 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 the, is a theme in the environment and also a theme in terms of the Institute, so uh, yeah connecting different ways of thinking and, and, and seeing. So um, that's a really important aspect. I, I think Noreen has a question as well. Yes, if I may. Um, thanks for the really interesting um, presentation of, of your work. It, it, it yeah. seems really cool. Um, I had a question about your engagement with county councils. So you've had some engagement now with a few over a period of time. I was wondering if you think that they're becoming more um, more receptive to your sort of approach to highlighting um, issues of um, degradation and, and biodiversity issues. And secondly, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on sort of your legacy impact of your work and what you're trying to highlight in terms of maybe change, behavior changes by councils or policy change or that sort of thing. And obviously I can only speak to the councils I've worked with and I would say they've all been extremely receptive and extremely supportive. Uh, I think it's a very, very slow process and I think even the county councils that I've worked with, I've seen different levels of engagement and uh, openness to it. Um, and of course, your the notion of navigating that kind of bureaucracy is a thing of its own, you know? Um, so I, I also think uh, we're at a stage where it's hard to um, avoid this conversation. Um, I think climate change is obviously making itself actually quite visible at the moment, which is probably new for a lot of people. Um, also, obviously, we've had, uh, we have the Green Party in power, uh, or in government, I should say, and that's obviously having um, probably a knock-on effect as well, you know. But without a doubt, I think these, um, the councils are, are, are much more open to this kind of conversation. So it obviously it makes our life easier, but again, as I say, you're, you're navigating bureaucracy, so that takes time. So. The length of this residency is actually fantastic because most residencies that I have been involved in would be, you know, six weeks, three months even in Wexford was a long residency. And it was great to have that much time. This is really exciting to get so much time. Uh, in relation to legacies, yeah, listen, I'd love to be able to think that I have changed policy. But um, again, for me, it's much more about just like trying to initiate conversations with people. And we were talking about this yesterday. We had a, a studio meeting yesterday and we were talking about this and how do you, how do you engage with people? Uh, other, you know, a lot of the time, if you put artwork, you know, art and art galleries, 
you're nearly talking to a, uh, an audience who is very, very open to this kind of thing. It's more about getting out there and talking, trying to find a way to talk to people who might not be as interested in this kind of conversation. That's what I'm thinking about at the moment. And, and I guess this institution and Dunleary right down County Council has a lot of kind of um, information around that kind of um, idea, if you know what I mean, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I hope that answers your question. It does, thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Does and anybody else? Tressa? Yeah. Hi there. I'm based in the School of English at UPD and um, it's really interesting because what you're saying is obviously being registered quite strongly in terms of like environmental degradation and climate change and thinking through how you narrate human animal interconnections and how this is like very culturally inflected is like a huge part of um, literature right now, poetry, short stories, the novel, um, and obviously has a different cultural registration depending on where it's kind of coming from. So there's like a strong kind of cultural critical critique of, um, you know, nature cultural kind of binaries that were established during the Enlightenment period in the Western world, for example, that maybe don't exist so strongly or in the same way, say, in, East Asian culture and that's reflected in the art, visual art as well as literary works as well. Um, so I guess it was more like a pretty general question but I'd love to hear like what your engagement is perhaps or um, where you see engagements might be with um, people who work in different forms so like literature, the, the written form as well as performance poetry as well perhaps because that would seem to be a really obvious um, way to engage audiences in, in multiple different ways. But also, like, have you engaged with or thought about kind of visual and cultural forms from other cultures that maybe, um, maybe perceive of human animal interconnections kind of differently? And have they been an inspiration for your work? Um, yes, I have thought about them and I have looked at them. Um, and I guess the title to this presentation kind of gives a little nod to that. Know, the uh, interconnectedness of everything. Um, collaboration is, everything I do, I consider collaboration because everything, every piece of artwork that I've ever produced has come out of conversations with other people and usually I'm tapping into other people's knowledge and skills to help me produce a piece of work. And it's that comes out of that cross-fertilization of conversation as well. And so, um, I, I have not directly engaged with poetry or poets or um, writers as of yet in my practice, but I'm certainly open to it. Um, so if you have any ideas you'd like to come and talk to me about or email me about, I'd be very interested in hearing that. Uh, I should have said I'm, I'm really poor at um self-promotion or promoting my school, but we have an environmental humanities research strand in the College of Arts and Humanities right now. We're running um, various seminars and workshops, so I might drop you a line after this, but we, we definitely have loads of poets, even just in my school, who work um, at the intersection of poetry and ecology, as well as people like myself who are drier kind of academics who are theorizing this as well. So, yeah. Um, I'd, lo I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear about that, so please. Great, thanks. Thank you. I, I think Katie Burns have a have a question or a comment as well. I did. Yes, thanks. Um, so we're talking a lot about engagement and impact here, um, and I know from my past engagement work and everything, a, a big thing that people are trying to highlight is is actually getting some sort of. Um, analysis of your engagement um, at the end of a, a project like this. Um, so whether with like a survey or um, something like that, um, and it's a really good way to be able to see exactly the type of impact you're having and um, sort of maybe even improve for, for future projects. And I was wondering if you had maybe considered doing something like that or had done anything like that in your past projects. And, and that's quite a hard question to answer. I, what I would say is I tap into all that kind of information you're talking about and then I uh, <laughs> mutate it, I guess, in some way. 
Um, that's a really hard one to answer. That, that information is essential to me to help me develop a project. But I guess what I end up doing is stepping out of that um, oh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess I'm taking the tools that I have, the tools of my trade and the knowledge and experience that I have that comes from producing art and trying to mold the two in some way to create something that maybe somehow, like putting up that poster on the beach, which was very much like little bits of information, but it's a different way of kind of maybe approaching that information and presenting it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And I'm, I'm sure that it is, um, it's very different, especially with a sort of a, a public art piece like the posters where you're not necessarily seeing everyone who's coming in and interacting with it. Um, so of course it's not always possible, but, um, but yeah, maybe in like the terms of if you had an, ex an exhibit space or something like that, even just having note cards can sometimes be a cool way to track it. Yeah, I've never done that. To be honest, I've never done that. But it's what I, I what happened, often there's a book left where people leave comments and that always fascinates me, absolutely fascinates me because you get to see how people perceive your work and often, it's so different do you think it's going to be, you know? And that's really, really interesting. And that, and that, I guess, is its own analysis in some way as well. And you take that away with you and you think about that and you, it might somewhere turn up in the next piece of work somehow, or you know what I mean? You refine or, or ignore. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Mark. Okay. Thanks. We're, we're coming to the end of the, of the time slot. So thanks everyone for, for engaging in that. That's a really interesting conversation. And conversation and collaboration have been the current, the current themes throughout. And, I, and I, so I think it's really, you know, this is the, the beginning of a, of a conversation between a, an artist and, and researchers, which fundamentally is, 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 is geared towards a new, new pieces of art, but I hope will also spark new ideas for research. I think, you know, the re researchers benefit from these different perspectives and different ways of thinking about uh, the world and, and, the, and the finding and, and research about it. So uh, I hope this will be a really fruitful collaboration for everybody that's involved. And I really wish you all, all the best, Mark, going forwards and uh, really look forward to, to, to seeing how things develop. So thanks very much. Please get in touch with any questions or ideas that you would like to have a chat about. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. See you next Thank week. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye.